Hello YouTube friends. Welcome to The Last Homely House. I'm Kate and today I'm working on a project using scraps but not quilting weight scraps. I'm using these little tiny scraps of tweed. Now I bought a bundle, a couple of bundles of tweed to make a curtain for my composting toilet in the cabin. Now if you follow the channel The Last Homely Garden which talks all about the things that I'm doing outside um, with um, my neighbour Ant who's helping me to build this cabin and dig the pond, all of that stuff all happens over on that channel there. But now that the cabin's nearly finished it's time for me to start making things, uh, soft things, to go in there. So the first thing was the curtain to go over the gap where the little composting toilet is and that is this four inch, well a four inch finish, four and a half inch pieces of tweed which finish at four inches, sewn in a very regular way and then stitch, I really enjoyed doing this, I stitched um, a running stitch all the way along every one of the seams in brown thread. Now who would have thought you'd hear Kate talking about brown thread? I'm usually to be found sewing beautiful colourful strips of cotton together but this uh, cabin really does need a different kind of style and so the tweed's perfect for that. With all the offcuts of tweed, I had lots of bits of tweed left over that were four and a half inches wide and, uh, and longer. So I cut them into little strips and I'm sewing them together to make what I hope will be big enough to be a lap quilt. So this is four and a half inches and what I'm doing is sewing these strips together until they're about 36 inches wide. And then I'll see how far I can go with I'm using every single scrap of tweed that I have left over. And so I'm just going to keep going until it's as big as it can be. So I'm really enjoying doing that. I love the tweed to sew with because firstly it hasn't got a back or a front. So whatever I pick up I can just uh, put it with the next one. Also they all go together so beautifully this uh, lovely range of tweed scraps that I've got. So it doesn't matter which one I pick up, I can just sew those together really easily. Now, tweed is traditionally uh, from uh, either uh, Harris Tweed, which is an island off the coast of uh, Scotland, beautiful island, and that's where the Harris uh, Tweed is made on the Isle of Harris. And then the Yorkshire woolen mills, they were very uh, famous for making tweed as well. So it's, it's got a lovely long tradition in the British Isles here. But when I was thinking about what to back the curtain for the cabin with, I chose um, Indian block printed fabric. So I have a lot of these uh, 12 inch squares of, uh, are they 12 or 10 inch? I think they're 10 inch squares of um, Indian block printed fabric that I bought for my dressing gown, um, which I made some time ago. And um, when the colours arrived, there were lots of colours that were useful for that project, but there were a load more that went. And so I saved all of those and I backed the cabin curtain with this Indian block printed fabric. Now, in these in this sort of um, earthy colours, I really like the idea of using tweed from uh, the historically from the British Isles, Indian block printed fabric from the Indian continent and putting those two things together. Those two cultures could not be further apart but they work really well together in this cabin um, door um, curtain, this cabin curtain. So what I'm going to do today then is stitch these together till I get the size that I can and then I'm going to use these fabrics that are sort of um, earthy tones really for the back of the, the lap quilt. It's only going to make a lap quilt so I'm going to use some of these lovely fabrics here for the back of the quilt. So I think this could be a project that I get finished in one day. <laughs> not, the st not the quilting part because I've got this idea that I might quilt it um, I'm looking at it over there, not down each of the seams because they're so irregular, but just do a grid, uh, maybe, I don't know, four inches apart in this 
lovely stitching, something like that. I'll decide what to do about that when I get to that part. But for now, I'm going to stitch, oops, I've dropped one. I'm going to stitch these together until I've got the piece as big as it can be. It's not going to be massive, but it might be just something you can put over your knees when you're sitting down in the cabin. When I'm sitting down in the cabin on a cold morning, I can just tuck it round my knees if I want to. That's the plan. I will put wadding in it, I think, yes, so that make it a little bit more thermal. And uh, so I think this, like I've just said, I think this is a project I can get finished in one day. So let's see, let's see if I'm right about that. So I finished sewing it together. It's much later in the day now because I'll be doing all sorts of other things as well as sewing on this. But it's uh, finished and it's 36 inches wide and 39 inches long, which is almost square, isn't it? But now I've got to think about what to choose for the backing. And I want to carry on and do this today so that I can get onto the hand stitching. That'll be the fun part. So I've chosen these fabrics then from my stack of Indian block printed fabrics. And when I, I got these, they were 10 inches square, but not an accurate 10 inches. So I've just trimmed them all down to 10 inches and just taken these little bits off the edges here. And so I, what I thought would look nicer because of the scale of this one is if these were if these were five inch squares and I sewed them together, it's make myself a bit more work. But I think that would be a nicer uh, scale for this um, these small bitty quilts, quilt blocks. So I'm going to cut these into five inch squares now, and sew these together just randomly, uh, just so that no two are next to each other, and then we'll get on and do the. Um, the quilting which is the bit I'm looking forward to doing so I want to motor on with this bit really so I'll cut these into five inch squares and we'll sew these together It's the next morning now, uh, the sun's streaming in through the window so I've had to draw all the curtains so that you can actually see what I'm doing without it being bathed in sunlight. Uh, I had hoped that I would get the back finished, which is that, uh, the front's finished and then the back, so that I could get to the part where I was hand stitching today, but it got to about seven o'clock and I thought, I don't have to do, I'm not, you know... <laughs> No one needs me to do this in a hurry. So I um, stopped and I've just finished sewing this together this morning. Now these squares, I squared them up to make, the, um, to make them into 10 inches, but then I cut them into five inch squares uh, because I thought that, that the scale of that would look better with the size of the uh, thing that I'm making. So what I'm gonna do now then <laughs> now that that's finished and the underneath it is the tweed part that you saw yesterday or you saw a second ago uh, uh, I'm going to press that now and then I'm not going to pin them together and bind it like a quilt but I'm going to sew them together 
and turn it inside out as like it was a very big cushion and then a stitch into that so that the edges will be just like this. That's exactly how I did the, that's exactly how I did uh, this one where I stitched the edges uh, like that. So instead of it being bound, it's going to be um, a nice straight edge. You know what I mean, don't you? So that's what I'm going to do now is um, get all that lot laid out. I am going to put wadding in it because it's supposed to be a, a cosy thing to tuck in round your knees and so it has to be warm. So I'm going to do that and then uh, hopefully get to the stage where I can start hand quilting that uh, later today. But there is one more thing I want to show you because uh, while I was buying the um, tweed bundle and these little Indian squares, I bought some linen samples. Uh, it was a sample pack. I can't even remember where I saw them, but I'll try and dig out where I found them from and stick a link in the description for you. But this was a, is a company that sells linen by the meter. And um, so I thought, well, if I buy the sample pack, I'll see which colours I like. Because I'm thinking that once Ant puts the windows into the cabin, which by the time you see this video, he will have done. Uh, that's going to, they're going to need curtains on the inside as well so that I can draw curtains there. So I was thinking that some of this linen might do very nicely. But then when it arrived, all these little linen samples, I made this one second while I, while I go and get it. So I stitched all the linen samples together. They were... Um, two and a half inches and so I trimmed them to properly two and a half inches because they were quite crudely cut and I made this little cushion it's got a little bit of the um, leftover bits of tweed on the back to make the envelope back which is the way I like to make cushions it's just small just 12 inches square and then I stitched round each of the squares uh, just a decorative stitch and that's now a little cushion that could go in the cabin. But you know, I've been using it on my sewing chair, so it might not make it down to the cabin. But I think that I would like to use some of this linen, now I know what all the colours are, to order some for the cabin, uh, to make curtains for that big window. I'm not quite sure which of these many colours I'll choose, but there's loads to choose from here. I like this little cushion. Uh, so now then, uh, I'm going to... Um, crack on with this now doing those three layers and getting the whole thing ready to stitch and I'm not in a hurry to stitch it uh, I'll just do that in my own time in a you know in a quiet evening sometimes a little bit of hand stitching but finishing the machining part of this is my ambition for today okay then so um, I'll show you how I get on with this then Well, it's the next day now and I spent a bit of time last night stitching well I stitched all the way around the outside which is lovely but then I started to stitch quilting stitches on this tweed and I completed one and then part of a second one but I don't like how it looks and so I think it looks better just as it is so I only did one run it didn't take that long so I'm gonna glasses on I'm gonna take it out now that, it's not going to take long to do. You couldn't see it and it didn't really add anything to the overall look of the piece, I don't think. And so I'd be quite happy for it to be called finished with no quilting on. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to undo the bit of work I did last night. It didn't take long. Um, at least I didn't do about 10 rows and decided I didn't like it. I only did one. So that's going to come out now <laughs> and mm, now I've done one stitch row around the outside. Shall I do a second? No, I think that'll be it finished when I take this row of stitching out and then we'll see if it actually is fit for purpose. <laughs> if it's going to sit on my knee nicely, I think it might. It's always a lot quicker to take out than it is to put in, isn't it? Uh, 
and it's easier to see on the back so that's why I'm taking it out from the back. Well that's done, didn't take very long at all and now my little tweed blanket is done. I like the back too. Very warm and bright and very cosy and tweedy. So that's going to go down to my cabin now. It can sit over the back of a chair until I need it. I'm very pleased with that. It's not very big, but I think it's fine. And so, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time with another idea. I want to make quite a few different blankets and warm things for the cabin. And so I think that there might be... I've got some more ideas and some uh, thoughts about what I might do. So I think there might be some more cabin, cabin blankets to come. Maybe we'll make a playlist of cabin blankets, who knows. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Um, it's always lovely to see you here and give me a subscribe and click the notifications bell because then you'll never miss when I post a video and uh, give us a thumbs up. That's always friendly and I'll see you soon. Bye now.